Welcome, Cliff Thrasher. How are you? Excellent. Darren, how are you doing? I'm doing very good. I'm glad to, that we caught you on your uh, lovely patio on this beautiful San Diego spring day. Well, it was this or my kitchen, so I thought that this would be better. This is, this is nice. So, Cliff, you've been with the company for quite a number of years. When did you start? I started um, August of 2004, so this is my 17th year. 17th year, and you've had uh, an amazing run with a lot of things happening, and I must say, an incredible team. Yes, thank you so much for taking the time to interview them and, you know, honoring what they do, because, you know, as, as we all know, they, they're the front lines, they're the, they're the people that, that uh, you know, take the good and the bad, and, and I really appreciate you honoring them. Thank you. Absolutely. They are really the face of the company in so many ways. And the uh, voice, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You These know? days, yeah. Yeah, and we love them, and thank you for um, uh, having such a great department. Sure. Um, uh, so you um, are not a native San Diegan. You are from where? Uh, Youngstown, Ohio. I grew up in the, um, uh, right on the border of Pennsylvania and Ohio, right between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Ah, okay. And uh, do you? So your family is probably still uh, that way. Yes. Yeah, they're all all back in uh, just north of Youngstown, Ohio, in a little uh, uh, township called um, Hubbard. Wonderful. I don't yeah. know it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, small. <laughs> small. Um, and you uh, also play the cello, um, which yes. I found out as I started a few years ago and heard some noises coming uh, <laughs> at one point. And I remember walking past your office and doing a double take because I thought somebody was in there and it was just your, just your cello and you. Uh, how long have you been playing? Uh, this year, I started when I was 10. So this is, this is 50, 50 years wow. of, um, uh, as a famous conductor one day, actually it was, uh, Jonas Starker in a masterclass, you know, uh, talking to a young woman, is there anything else you can do besides scratch that thing? So yeah, uh, 50 years of uh, playing cello. And I started, uh, my uh, sixth grade year of junior high and have really been playing ever since and that's a, a big instrument like it's physically well big you know instrument. thank gosh I never I didn't pick up the double bass you know the double bass you have to stand up to play so uh yeah I, uh, thankfully I that that instrument did not pick me the cello pretty much picked me yeah so. and you uh were able to study that through your formative years then Yes, uh, we had a really, really good music program at Boardman High School. And uh, my junior and senior year, we had an 85 piece symphony orchestra. So um, really, really uh, good community support, good backing and a great education. And, you know, which helped me for uh, get, get a scholarship to college and was which transferred me west of the Mississippi. And, you know, here I am, so. Yeah, well, I think it, you know, it's amazing. You and I, I'm from Iowa. So um, people always say Ohio when I say Iowa every single time. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, we're around the same age. So I think in that time period, we really, those people that were supporting us through school really cared about arts education. Yeah, and and today, unfortunately, it's a, it's a battle. Although, see, hopefully, it seems to be making a comeback and, you know, that, that helps with building our future audiences of tomorrow through arts education. And uh, I, I'm a firm believer in that. I, uh, you know, I saw my first opera in, while I was in high school, 1972 Tosca in downtown Youngstown. And, you know, to this day that Tosca still brings back so many memories. Wow, that's great. That's wonderful to hear. My, my early is all from, you know, cartoons and things uh, not to <laughs> live. Uh, it wasn't until I was probably in my early 20s that I actually saw live opera. Um, so uh, do you have any favorite pieces that you like to play or what are you do and what are you doing now with your cello? Well, you know, my favorite piece is usually what I'm working on. And uh, thankfully, you know, finally, after all these months, this, this past year of, you know, uh, playing here uh, um, solo alone and virtually, um, Villa Musica is doing a spring orchestra. And so it's a spring orchestra, string orchestra, and we're out back in a tent 
up in Sorrento Valley. Uh, Bill Gilmore, who is uh, Gilmer, who is Martha Gilmer's husband, is our conductor. So you know, really, really small world that we live in. Um, but yeah, we're we're preparing three pieces, and we'll be mid-April amongst all of the other things that are going on with San Diego Opera. I'll be in a parking lot in a tent, wearing a mask, playing cello with others. So. It, it's, uh, it's great, great fun. Bringing it back as we can. And you had mentioned to me earlier uh, an online uh, situation that you found yourself in through COVID. Yeah, um, there, uh, April 1st is a year that COVID Cello Project, the COVID Cello Project has come into being. Young man out of Austin, Texas, uh, a few years back, maybe five years back, he founded the um, Portland Cello Project, um, but has been doing the COVID Cello Project and it allows us all to prepare virtually, you know, you know, um, video and send that off to him. And he mixes it all together. And uh, the last project was 534 cellos. And uh, so that we're expecting that to come out any day now. But uh, there's been um, 13 of these project concerts that have gone on. Wow. That's a, a little silver lining is what we call yeah. it. Um, okay. Now, you've been with the company a while. Do you have any memorable or funny stories to share? Well, you know, I mean, we all have that first aha moment with a production company and certainly San Diego Opera when we're backstage and, you know, it's just like, wow, I'm, I'm part of this. This is the product. This is what I'm selling. Uh, you know, so, and so that, that happened uh, in, you know, I joined August of 2004. Mouse was the first opera and that wasn't until January, the end of January. So I had all these months of being in the office and, you know, hearing all of this stories, but um, my dogs were cast as extras in Deflator Mouse and made an entrance, an entrance into um, opening active of act two. And uh, uh, I, I got to be at rehearsals with the dogs and watching, you know, the, the, all these people that I knew from the office, you know, diligently working and, you know, the chorus and costumes and, you know, so it was, it was just stunning. And, and suddenly to realize that, wow, you know, this, this is it, this, this is what it's about. And this then, you, you know, the, the other thing that I would just like to say that really was a humbling experience in 2014 with the almost shuddering of this, this company, um, the community rally to come together and, you know, in 10 days time, to raise two million dollars to to change the course of of uh, of the future and where we are now, um, you know, it, it's just like nothing I've ever experienced in the 35 years that I've been in this business. Um, the the rallying and the cry out of uh, that, you know, no, you know, you won't go, and and you know, really, really thankful to the community and to this day through this year the the um, the patrons that have supported us and and you know keep tra keeping their money and their ticket revenue with the company moving us forward and saying nope we're going to wait we're going to wait no we're going to come to the drive-in you know so any gyration that we've thrown at them they've been really flexible and supportive and you know i i just gotta, gotta say i'm really really proud to be a part of this community and part of uh, San Diego Opera. It is a great community. There's no question. Yeah, wonderfully said. Um, I am curious, how, how did your dogs do? They did great. It's funny, you know, that was back in the day when we did five performances and um, <clears throat> they entered on uh, Brian Asawa's arm, who was a counter tenor and he was Count Orlovsky. And, uh, you know, you never upstage a counter tenor or a tenor for that matter. So, you know, the dogs stopped the show, all five performances, you know, and their onstage time got shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> so it was, it was hysterical by the end of it. And uh, my husband, I, I was working out front. So my husband, Brad was the um, backstage mom. You know, he had to take the dogs up, you know, hand them off to Brian and then Brian would make the circle and that circle got smaller and smaller as the productions went on it. Uh, he would, you know, toss the leash back to Brad and that was, you know, but they, they did fantastic, but, you know, attending rehearsals with them and, and, you know, watching and watching the production grow from you know blocking and where people stand and and then adding the music and then adding the orchestra to to opening night and you know sitting there just 
being amazed that wow, you know, we we were doing this in the basement a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, just true. incredible. It was a great experience. And you know, I keep saying that, you know, I, I've got these glorious dogs. When's their next role? When do we when do you get to go back? You have so. some beautiful dogs and you're passionate about them. And I love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, one last question, favorite aria. You know, in 2015, we did our 50th anniversary concert uh, with the symphony on stage. And for Virgil Ferlanetto, world-renowned bass, we've been lucky to have him for years and years. He sang the aria from Don Carlo. It's called um, King Philip's aria. And uh, it is paired with a solo cello. And um, that, to this day, has just stuck with me. And um, uh, I've never seen the pr a production of Don Carlo, but that aria and the pairing of the bass human voice and the cello, uh, Verdi just captured it. And um, my, my hair is, is growing all over my body as I, I describe it. It's yeah. you know, really a, a moment in time. So Yeah, there's nothing like it when one piece just clicks for yeah. you. It's really a beautiful yeah. experience. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And again, thank you for um, being director of patron services for San Diego Opera. We love you. We love your people, Aaron and Matt. Um, and, and we all miss Rose still to this day. Shout yes. out to Rose. So uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Darren.